Hi guys, welcome back to Caterpillar Cross Stitch. My name is Sean, and in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you 10 cross stitching terms used in the world of cross stitching. If you're new around here, welcome. Here on this channel, we upload weekly cross stitch related videos, and we would love for you to join the community by hitting that subscribe button and clicking on the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future uploads. I would also encourage you to go and check out the Caterpillar Cross Stitch website where you can sign up to the newsletter and gain instant access to the freebie designs Sally has created. Let's jump right in with the first term which I think is probably the most used term you will hear in cross stitching and that is whip. Now this is a common term used outside of cross stitching, but in cross stitching community we use the word whip to categorise those projects you've started but not yet finished. You often see here on YouTube a video called Whip Parade and this essentially is where cross stitchers will share with the community all of their whips or their projects that they have started or are currently working on. So if you hear a cross stitcher saying they have five whips, that essentially means that they have five projects that they are currently stitching. Moving on to FO. Now a project will move from a whip, a work in progress, to an FO when all the stitches are complete. So what is an FO you ask? Well, it stands for finished object. When all the stitches from the design have been achieved and there are no more stitches to add, this now becomes a finished object. Now you might have heard the term FFO, so what's the difference? Well, an FFO stands for fully finished object. Now this refers to your cross stitching being complete and is now able to be displayed. For example, if you have framed your cross stitching or turned your cross stitching into a pillow, this is now an FFO. For example, you can see behind me various different display items and these are all FFOs. There are times where we may start a project but we may halfway through decide that we don't particularly enjoy stitching it anymore so we turn it to a UFO. UFO stands for an unfinished object. Now this could mean that you no longer want to work on that project and don't foresee yourself picking it up again or you may create a UFO pile where you may come back to it at a later date if you decide that you want to pick it back up and stitch it again. Now the next one is definitely not a cross stitcher's best friend and that is frogging. When you hear a stitcher say I need to frog my stitches they are referring to undoing the stitches they have done. Now you're probably wondering why it's called frogging well, it's linked to stitchers needing to rip out their stitches, which then essentially sounds like ribbit ribbit, especially when ripping out multiple stitches. I'm sure many of you who have followed Caterpillar Cross Stitch for a while now will be very familiar with the next term, which is stitch along, also known as a sal. A stitch along is where you stitch a design at the same time as someone else. It may be a group of stitchers decide to stitch a particular pattern and complete the pattern with no particular rules. Or the pattern could be broken down into sections and each of them sections are stitched on a particular day in the month. Or a designer could decide to release a mystery pattern which is stitched as part of a community and the final pattern being released on the last part. Moving on to the next term, we have an ONS or an LNS. ONS stands for Online Needle Workshop, which is where you can buy your cross stitching supplies online. An LNS is a local needle workshop, which is an actual shop you can go and visit and buy your supplies. Moving on to the next term, we have blended stitches. Blended stitches is where you have a stitch which is made up of different colours. This is normally used in a large detailed pattern. An example of what this may look like, I'm going to take two different coloured DMC colours and I'm going to take one strand from each of the skeins. I'm then going to combine the two strands together and this now forms my blended thread. The next term is something that's made quite a difference to my stitching and that is railroading. 
Railroading is where you separate your strands with your needle before you secure the thread in place. This really helps to create neat stitches as the threads lay flat on your fabric. I really like using railroading as it really has made a difference to the way my stitches look. There is a great video here on Caterpillar Cross Stitch that talks more in detail about railroading and we will leave that down below in the description box so you can go and check it out. There are different ways to park in threads, but essentially the term parking is where you are stitching with a colour which you no longer need to use in that area that you're stitching, but you don't want to end the thread. You find where the next stitch is using that colour and you leave the thread in the hole ready for when you are in that area so you can pick that thread back up and start to stitch again. This is commonly used in larger projects where there might be quite a lot of colours which results in quite a lot of colour changing to create the detail that the design requires. So there we have 10 common terms used in the world of cross stitching. Now there are many more terms used in the community so if you want to see a part two then make sure to give this video a big thumbs up so that we know to create more content like this. So that's all from us here at Caterpillar Cross Stitch. Thank you so much for watching and until next time we'll see you in the next one.